In Italy, a new movement has emerged in opposition to former Deputy Prime Minister Matteo Salvini's far-right populism. It's called the Sardines Movement because of their capacity to pack themselves into piazzas. Yesterday, tens of thousands turned out to protest Salvini's populist politics and anti-migrant language, but in some places, his rhetoric has taken hold. Early this year, we brought you a story from the Italian town of Riace, which gained a reputation for welcoming migrants until a new populist government brought that experiment to an end. Now, Italy has changed governments again, and NewsHour Weekend special correspondent Christopher Livesay has an update to our story. Tucked up in the hills along Italy's southern coast is a small town with a big reputation. We first visited Riace in 2016. It had become famous during the height of the immigration crisis in Europe for welcoming migrants and refugees with a smile. Poco, poco, lite, lite, italiano. The mayor at the time, Domenico Lucano, proudly introduced us to some of them, like this woman from Afghanistan. The town provided refugees like her with work in specialty shops, training in small workshops, and other jobs around town. Albania. Pakistan. It housed them in formerly abandoned apartments in an innovative program mostly paid for with government funds. Mayor Lucano was even named one of Fortune magazine's 50 greatest world leaders for his integration policies. The many refugees and migrants we met, like Daniel Yaboa, who's originally from Ghana and had a job collecting trash and recyclables, said they were grateful to the people of Riace. They are friendly, uh, and they are used to, to foreigners, they are used to welcome everybody here. So I'm very happy and I'm here now. <laughs> But returning three years later, we found a very different scene in Riace. I see. In fact, I think this is the one of the workshops where they were working in wool. It's closed. The once busy so-called global village, which was the heart of the immigrant area, is now more like a ghost town. The specialty shops and workshops that had employed and trained migrants are all closed. Most of the migrants are gone too. As you can see, it's not like before. So. Daniel Yaboa is one of the few still left. It's not a good thing, you know. I'm just feeling bad for the, the, my colleagues, my friends, you know. For me, you know, I've been here for past 10 years, so for me, uh, it's not a problem for me, but I'm just pity, pity, I'm very pity for the, 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 my colleagues. What happened? A political sea change. A once fringe party called the League, which has a blunt Italians first anti-immigration message, won in local elections this past spring. Claudio Falchi, the League's leader here at the time, credits the victory to a major backlash against the migrant program in once left-leaning Riace. Del paese invaso. Against the will of the town, we were invaded by a myriad of nationalities, people coming from Ghana, Ivory Coast, Senegal, that is, from countries where there aren't any wars, economic migrants. Citizens here felt abandoned. At a local cafe, people told us they felt overwhelmed by the number of migrants. That's an invasion. Because of the numbers, even if you ask the left, how many migrants do we have to host? They don't tell you how many. Are we supposed to get all of Africa? Riace also elected a new mayor, league-backed Antonio Trifoli. He replaced Lucano, who's being investigated for mismanagement of the refugee program funds, charges Lucano's supporters say are politically motivated. With Lucano gone, the refugee program collapsed and the migrants moved away, according to the new mayor. I think an integration project for migrants makes sense, but only with a limited number. At times, we had 500 to 600 migrants here. Now how many migrants are here? Adesso quante ce ne sono? Adesso sono rimaste... Now there are only a few families, those who were truly unable to integrate. 10, 20 families, let's say about 50 migrants. If there used to be 600 migrants and now there's only 50, where did all the migrants go? They went to other migration centers in Italy. Some went to France, a lot of them left on their own or they had to leave because of the investigation. And the Interior Ministry closed the nonprofit that was running their project. As soon as the public money stopped coming in, these workshops closed. A national politics changed in Italy too. He's right. Riace may be an isolated village, but what's happening here is not an isolated event. The League Party is now the most powerful party in the country, and it's leading a movement across Europe. 
The league's leader is Matteo Salvini. Up until recently, he was also deputy prime minister. He lost that position recently. But he and his party are still the most popular in the country, polling at more than 30%. And Salvini has his eye on a comeback. The league recently won in Umbria, yet another historically left-wing region in central Italy. Roberto Minotti with the Aspen Institute Italia says the league has successfully capitalized on the issue that's kept Europe in knots in recent years, migration, making a dramatic promise to voters about the flow of migrants into the country. The argument in uh previous government, center-left government especially, was we will manage the phenomenon for you. We cannot stop the flow. Now Salvini is actually sending a different message. We'll actually try to stop the flow, uh, which in the past essentially no government really even tried to make as an argument. Minotti says the league's slogan, Italians first, is of the kind that may sound familiar to Americans. And of course it has a Trumpian uh, ring uh, to it, so a feeling that you have to make sure that most of your national uh, resources actually go to your own citizens first. So that feeling is very widespread and certainly the League has been exploiting that politically. Minotti notes there's another thing Salvini has in common with President Trump. He tweets a lot. He also is a great fan of selfies. So he's extremely savvy in terms of, of uh, social media. Natalie Tolci is deputy director of the International Affairs Institute. He doesn't necessarily want people to like him. The point is being talked about. This is very much the tactic that nationalist populist leaders use uh, across the West. They make the news. And Salvini's greater ambitions became evident at a large rally in Milan earlier this year. He addressed a cheering crowd, kissing a crucifix, and introducing some of Europe's biggest far-right leaders. No more dictates from the EU superstate. They included the Dutch politician Geert Wilders. No more immigration. Basta immigration. Basta Islam. And France's far-right party leader Marine Le Pen. We're taking this revolution of good sense to all of Europe, she told the crowd. The key message was the League is not only very successful at a national level, it is also a European force with the ability to actually use this general movement to the right across the continent as a new political tool. But there are limits to how influential one nationalist party can be, according to Tochi. The point about nationalists is precisely that they're nationalists, so they tend to not agree with one another. They may like each other politically, but they're completely unable to cooperate and help each other on a policy level. Whether the right wing will manage to unite is unclear, but it's already having an impact on people like Yaboa in places like Riace. For me, it's not a good thing for the city too, you know, you can see how uh, everywhere is quiet. And Minotti says the trend will continue for some time to come. The reasons why a party like the League and a leader like Salvini can become very popular very quickly are there to stay. And they have to do with globalization, with the impact of uh, economic inequalities and so on. All issues that are more or less felt in the same way in the United States just as in Europe. So there are reasons to keep watching what happens in places like Italy.